Welcome back to Flight Insight Test Prep. We're reviewing everything you need to know to pass your test. This is Private Pilot Knowledge Test Prep, Chapter 3, The Flight Environment. After finishing this chapter, you'll be ready to try the practice test questions that go along with this course. We're going to be looking a lot at charts in this chapter, and we'll use the same charts you'll see on the FAA test as examples. Charts use lines of latitude and longitude to help determine position. Lines of latitude are parallel to the equator and are numbered from 0 degrees through 90 degrees. Lines of longitude run through both the north and south poles and go from 0 through 180 degrees. The intersection of these lines is a coordinate. This coordinate in northwest Idaho is 48 degrees north, 116 degrees west. If we move west along the line of latitude to the next vertical line, we've moved half of one degree or 30 minutes. So this coordinate is 48 degrees north, 116 degrees, 30 minutes west. An airport location can be determined by the intersection of lines of latitude and longitude. Shoshone County Airport is at 47 degrees 33 minutes north, 116 degrees 11 minutes west. Lines of longitude are the same length anywhere on the globe, so one minute distance on a line of longitude is equal to one nautical mile. The same can't be said for lines of latitude since they get smaller and smaller as they approach the poles. Visual landmarks like airports or geographic features are depicted with a flag symbol on the chart. This indicates a visual landmark that can be used when reporting position to air traffic control. Airports with a rotating beacon have a star at the top of their airport symbol. Airport symbols with small squares on the sides, bottom and top, have fuel available during normal business hours. Airports without control towers list the common traffic advisory frequency, CTAF, with the letter C on the chart. Weather information can be heard over the Automated Weather Observation Station, or AWOS frequency, found on the chart. Airports with control towers list the frequency next to CT. When the control tower is closed, the frequency is typically used as a CTAF. The sectional chart has information about airport elevation and runway length. Savannah's airport is at 50 feet elevation and its longest runway is 9,300 feet rounded to the nearest hundred. Airport symbols also use different colors to distinguish controlled from uncontrolled. Airports with control towers are shown in blue, airports without control towers are shown in magenta. Obstructions like towers are charted with their height in MSL as well as AGL in parentheses. So the difference between the two figures is the elevation at the base of the obstruction. In any area, a maximum elevation figure lists the altitude that ensures obstruction and terrain clearance within the quadrangle bounded by latitude and longitude lines. Here, the 2-8 symbol means the highest terrain or obstruction within the quadrangle can be cleared by flying 2,800 feet MSL or above, though this altitude may not necessarily be legally allowable as we'll see in Chapter 6. Radio aids to navigation like VORs and DMEs use transmitting stations which are shown on the charts. The VOR symbol is a hexagon, while the DME symbol is a square. A station that combines a VOR and DME will combine the two symbols on the chart, as you see at DFW Airport in Texas. Charts contain a lot of information, but they can't fit everything we need to know about the flight environment on them. Chart supplements are published to include additional information about airports and airspace. They're published every 56 days. The chart supplement lists each airport's distance from the nearest city. Loop City Municipal Airport is a mile northwest of the city. All airport traffic patterns use left-hand turns as standard unless the supplement notes that right turns are to be made. The runways that use right traffic are noted in the supplement. Controlled airspace will have its classification listed as well as which frequencies to use on initial contact.